Hello, and thank you for joining me on 8 I Am Maggie in our Momentum Challenge with Heart and Mind Align. I really appreciate you here. Okay, so in the Momentum Challenge, we are doing all things that are going to carry us on momentously, momentously and victoriously in the direction of our dreams, goals, visions, purposes, and acts of service. So we are just covering positive thought. We're doing all kinds of things. And what we are going to do now to like kick it home, we are going to do the complete works of Florence Shin. Now, I don't know how far we're going to get. Um, well, we're going to get all the way, but we have created this fertile ground to manifest many of our dreams, goals, visions, purposes, and acts of service. And so I'm going to be sticking in positive comment, positive um, sayings, what have you. But we are going to be doing, we're going to start with Florence Shin's The Game. Okay. All right. Most people consider life a battle. But it's not a battle, it's a game. Okay, so take that to heart, right? It's not a battle, it's a game. And as we become more in the stillness, no matter what storms are rolling around us, what noise, we begin to actually find the stillness in everything moving and still. So let's establish this. It's not a battle, it's a game. And it's a game it is a game, however, it is a game, however, which cannot be played successfully without the knowledge of spiritual law. And the Old and the New Testaments give the rules of the game with wondrous clearness. Jesus Christ taught that it was a great game of giving and receiving. So what's really beautiful is like um, in like um sorry, in Brian Scott's um, Reality Revolution, I am just so drawn to Joseph Murphy's work. So I'm gonna be working with that, but I actually wanted to go through Florence Scovelshin's work for a long time. I ordered the book. Um, I'm learning a lot about copyrights and all that. So. I'm gonna just have to pull excerpts out of the rest of um, Wayne Dyer's book, but we got through the most of the content of Excuses Be Gone, so may you continue to be executing that. This um, is free to read, and so we're gonna be doing it. But anyway, we've been studying, we've been digging into the Psalms in the Bible with Joseph Murphy, and I have always, love the Psalms. And so I encourage you that if you are walking through some dark valleys of the shadow of death, tap into the song, Psalms. They'll lift you up. And then now we're going to be covering the game by Florence Shin. And so she's just talking about how Jesus laid the example of giving and receiving. So here we go. So we're going to be also moving our vibration in the giving and receiving and learning how to play the game of life and win. So whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. So that's actually what we're doing right now. We planted all these seeds in our momentum challenge. And many of you are already bearing fruit in the momentum challenge. But whatsoever a man soweth, he shall so reap. So this means that whatever a man sends out in word or deed will return to him what he gives he will receive so guys gals everyone what we are giving animals plants mountains water air land everything what we give we will receive Neville likes to say we're all everyone is us pushed out but the more that you start to become re realizing that God is in here god is in each and every one of you and each of one of us are god us and god pushed out it's really fascinating to see all the different faces 
everywhere I look, I can see God in each person, no matter where we are in the spectrum. So, if he gives hate, he will receive hate. If he gives love, he will receive love. If he gives criticism, he will receive criticism. And if he lies, he will be lied to. If he cheats, he will be cheated. We are taught also that the imagining faculty plays a leading part in the game of life. So we're back to this giving and receiving. I wanna just challenge you in this momentum challenge. What are you giving? What are you receiving? Just take some time in the silence to see what maybe you are giving out that you might not be aware of and some things that you are aware. And if you're receiving, look at what you're receiving, see it, you know, evaluate where it's at and maybe what your place may be in that. Keep thy heart or imagination with all diligence for out of it are the issues of life. Proverbs 4.23. So Proverbs 4.23 talks to us about keeping our heart clean, keeping our heart in the um, higher order values. So I'm going to read that again. Proverbs 4, 23. Keep thy heart or your imagination with all diligence for out of it are the issues of life. And so if you are looking at challenges in your life, go into the heart. This means that what man imagines, imagine, um, images, sooner or later internalizes in his affairs. I know a man who feared a certain disease. He was a very rare, it was a very rare disease and difficult to get, but he pictured it continually and read about it and until it manifested in his body and he died, the victim of distorted imagination. So we see to play successfully the game of life, we must train the imaging faculty. A person with an imaging faculty trained to image only good brings into his life every righteous desire of his heart, health, wealth, love, friends, perfect self-expression, and his highest ideals. So the thing is, if you are beginning to tune into your thoughts and you're realizing they're not higher order thoughts, it's just time to cleanse, clear, and learn how to hone your imagination into those places. And just look at the deeper things in the heart that might be causing that manifestation. The imagination has been called the scissors of the mind. And it is ever cutting, cutting, day by day, the pictures man sees there. And sooner or later, he meets his own creations in his outer world. To train the imagination successfully, man must understand the workings of his mind. The Greeks say, know thyself. So it's so interesting because there's so much coming out now about how fantastic our minds are. And when you look at a lot of the Egyptian pictures, like the Eye of Horus, it's really like a cross section of our brain, which is so fascinating with our little antenna up into the heavens in there, the seed, the seed in the soul. So anyway, there are three departments of the mind, the subconscious, the conscious, and the superconscious. The subconscious is simply power without direction. It is the steam or electricity, and it does what it's directed to do. It has no power of induction. So that's the subconscious, right? Just powering ahead. Whatever man feels deeply or images clearly, is impressed upon the subconscious mind and carried out in the mind, minute test detail, minutest detail. So like, this is why we're also looking at um, that first seven years of life, how that shaped us 
what went on and just even the other years of our life because if we have images running in our mind that are not healthy we're going to want to switch those images out and get into that deeper work for example a woman i know when a child when a child always made believe she was a widow so for example a woman i know when a child always made believe she was a widow she dressed up in black clothes and wore a long black veil and people thought she was very clever and amusing she grew up and married a man with whom she was deeply in love in a short time he died and she wore black and a sweeping veil for many years the picture of herself as a widow was impressed upon the subconscious mind and in the due time worked itself out regardless of the havoc created. The conscious mind has, has been called mortar, mortar, mortal or carnal mind. Okay, the conscious mind. It is the human mind and sees life as it appears to be. Woo-wee! It sees death, disaster, sickness, poverty, limitation of every kind, and it impresses the subconscious mind. So it's just picking up images, and that's why it's so important. What are you looking at, and what are you taking in? The superconscious mind is the God mind within each man, is and is the realm of perfect ideas. And this is why our time in the silence and meditation is so important because that's when we actually lock into the super mind. So it, it in the it in it is the perfect pattern spoken of by Plato, the divine design for there is a divine design for each being, each person. There is a place that you are to fill and no one else can fill. Something you are to do which no one else can do. You understand that's you, okay? There is a place that you are to fill that no one else can fill. Something you are to do, which no one else can do. Please take that to heart, because I know a lot of people are kind of questioning their calling here, but here is your message from Florence Shin. You are unique, you are individual, and you are here to give your unique gift to the world. So on day 61 of this momentum challenge, if you have been wondering, no more wondering, just get to going on your purpose. So there is a perfect picture of this in the super conscious mind. It usually flashes across the conscious as an unattainable ideal, something too good to be true. Like for instance, a YouTube channel that's successful or public speaking or a healing practice or whatever, or authoring a book, etc. Collaborating with other business-minded entrepreneurs. So in reality, it is a man's true destiny or destination flashed to him from the infinite intelligence which is within himself. So, and a lot of us know what that is but we either are afraid to pursue it or we think it's overwhelming. And as Bree Seely loves to tell her female entrepreneurs, how to eat an elephant, one bite at a time. So as Maggie likes to, loves to say, the Lao Tzu quote, a journey of a thousand miles begins with one step. It's always like, if you just take those incremental steps, the next thing you know, you've taken a major leap. So. Many people, however, are ignorant of their true destinies and are striving for things and situations which do not belong to them and would only bring failure and dissatisfaction if attained. For example, a woman came to me and asked me to speak the word that she would marry a certain man with whom she was very much in love. She called him a period, B, period. I replied that this would be a violation of spiritual law, but that I would speak the word for the right man, the divine selection, 
the man who belongs to her by divine right, right? Because she's not violating other people's will. I added, if AB is the right man, you can't lose him. And if he isn't, you will receive his equivalent. She said, AB frequently had no headway, was, she saw, I'm sorry, she saw AB frequently, but no headway was made in the relationship. So universal flag. One evening she called and said, do you know for the last week, AB hasn't seemed so wonderful to me? I replied, maybe he is not the divine selection. Another man may be the right one. Soon after that, she met another man who fell in love with her at once and who said she was his ideal. In fact, he said all the things that she had always wished AB would say to her. So divine selection, right? I know a lot of people, um, I'm seeing more so than looking for the perfect me. I'm seeing a lot of people working to find the perfect um, job, career, or entrepreneur space. And I'm just wanting to let you know that the same thing is going to be for you. That divine selection related to your dream, goal, vision, purpose, acts of service is going to come around. You need to hold, hold the imagine and imagining, and you need to hold that space for it to come forward. So, she remarked, "It was quite uncanny." She too soon returned his love and lost all interest in A B. And this shows the law of substitution. A right idea was substituted for a wrong one. Therefore, there was no loss or sacrifice involved. And the beauty of this too is like, a lot of times when we're in life, we, we kind of keep headbutting things. We, we, keep, we think we want something, we keep headbutting and it doesn't work out. We don't take the red flags or the clues from the universe that there's a law of substitution. There's something equal or better for us. And so I want you to like, wherever you are in your momentum challenge, in your processes, bringing forward your dreams, goals, visions, purposes, and acts of service, I want you to realize that divine destiny is behind you. The universe has your back. There are so many things working out for you. This or something better is going to come your way in whatever you're working to manifest. And we're going to speak the word into your life. If whatever it is you want, you can't lose it and you will receive, if it's not the right one, it, you will receive that an equivalent or better. So there's div divine selection is supporting me in this process and all is well. Okay, whew, um, little, little, but we, that's day 61, a couple great points out of the game. Um, it's going to, We'll be back to probably finish up that, the game, next six, on day 62. And I just want to thank you so much for joining me in this Momentum Challenge. And may all that you do be blessed. Okay. And, oh, when you can, I appreciate your support. Please like and subscribe and leave your positive comments. I know this is a little bit slower pace, but I've noticed like I love listening to all the books, but sometimes when I break things down into smaller compartments, I can actually absorb it. And I've also learned too that um, sometimes when you repeat, 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 and then it slips in there, it just becomes part of you. So um, hoping you're all having just a wonderful day knowing you are and saying mucho, mucho prayers for you. All right, well, you know what's next. Thank you for joining me. Here we go. Peace in. Peace.